My name is Thomas Althaus. I'm a DPhil candidate uh, in Oxford University, but based in Southeast Asia. I've been mainly involved in a clinical trial based in Myanmar and Northern Thailand uh, with the objective to guide antibiotic prescription in primary care. Prescription of antibiotics in Southeast Asia is major. We consider this region uh, the epicenter of antibiotic prescription uh, in the world and the consequence, the immediate consequence of this massive antibiotic prescription is the mutation of bacteria to resistant strain. And primary care uh, represents the major source of this antibiotic prescription. And this is the reason why I was so interested in targeting primary care, because it reaches a large amount of the community and at the same time, there is no tool available to really identify patients in need of antibiotics. You have to understand that a typical health worker in a primary care isn't a doctor. It's a nurse with a limited clinical training with probably more than 100 patients a day. So health workers are facing a difficult, challenging question. And they have no tool to really answer this question. Fever can be caused by different pathogens. When a fever is caused by a virus, it doesn't need an antibiotic to be treated. We call this treatment symptomatic. It means that you only need, for example, some paracetamol to control the fever, and the body will handle the viral infection itself. On the opposite way, we also need to help them identifying those who have an infection that needs, that requires an antibiotic. Bacterial infection, for example, you can die from a bacterial infection if you do not have an antibiotics. The CRP rapid test is very simple, per se. It's a test that tells you when to give an antibiotic or not. You can, however, imagine that patients might not be willing to comply to this test if they do not understand what it is. As an example, extremely surprised to see a patient asking for an antibiotic despite a negative test because it took him a day to reach the facility and in terms of cost of transportation that was also very high for him. So you cannot just simply expect people to comply to your prescription without explaining the test what are the benefits and advantages of what we're doing. And this implies to know and to understand our population. It's not about saying that antibiotics is bad. Antibiotics is extremely useful, but it's precious and it's a scarce resource we need to control. So it's not a race to find new drugs. It's a race to slow down the pace of antibiotic prescription. Diagnosing malaria is extremely simple and cheap. We have rapid tests available everywhere for almost nothing. And because of those tests being more and more negative, because the disease is getting eliminated, we are now facing this new challenge that is, once my malaria test is negative, what do I do with my patients? How can I manage a patient without malaria, with a fever? How can I really figure out without having any access to laboratory if this patient needs an antibiotic or not. We also know that the most effective and funded research project trying to screen and to look for every pathogen do not discover more than, let's say, 50% of the causes of fever, which means that even though you use your best uh, diagnostic tool to investigate those causes of fever, in 50% of the cases, you will never know what they have. We know that antibiotic uh, prescription in primary care is around 70% in Asia, on average. And bacterial infections should represent around 20%. So there's a huge potential impact to have on health 
at this level of care. And with such impact for such small uh, investments, we could also allocate a bit of it to these non-specific illness tests that could save a lot of lives and at the same time immediately impact antibiotic prescription uh, at point of care.